Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. There might be times when you have a long list of data, and you need to extract just part of each cell. Think of a house number and an address. You might think, OK, I can use one of the text-to-columns techniques to split the cells into multiple columns, then keep the column I want and delete the rest. Well, that might work, but it takes a bunch of steps, there might not be a delimiter you can use, and it certainly isn't dynamic. To do the extraction dynamically, you need a formula, but there's another problem. Excel doesn't have a function for searching within a cell. The good news is there are two functions you can use together, and I've talked about them before. They're relatively new text after and text before functions in Excel 365. So let's take a look and see how it works. This worksheet has a column of products you can see down column A. And there's too much information in each cell. See, we have the product name, is it ground or whole bean, what's the size, product code, and shipping information. If you were making this sheet from scratch, you would know to create separate columns for the product names and all of the other info. So this is a list that you probably imported from somewhere else. I see this all the time. What I want to do is extract the product code from each one so we have a column just of the numeric codes. And you can see why using the text to column features will be a bother and won't really work so great, because while there's commas separating pieces of information, the product codes have commas after them, but not before them. So there's commas after all of those, but before each code, you see there's a space. So this is where the text after and text before functions help and why they're going to be so much better than doing something like going to the data tab and using the text to columns feature. So let's look at the function syntax first. The syntax is equals text before, and you notice there's a bunch of arguments, but it's only the first two that are required. So the first argument, text, that's just the text, or the cell more likely, that you're looking at. And the second argument is the delimiter. What is separating the pieces of text? Now, I said before that one of the reasons using Excel's normal splitting features wouldn't work is because of mixed delimiters, right? So we saw that on one side of the product code is a space, and on the other side is a comma. Well, this function would handle that without any problem. Now, let's talk about the other arguments. The ones in gray, those are optional. Instance number means, for example, if there are several commas, which one are you referring to? Are you referring to the first one, the second one, and so on? Match mode simply means, is the search case sensitive? Why couldn't Microsoft call it that? <laughs> That'd be maybe a little bit uh, more obvious. I don't know. Match end means you could use the end of the text or the end of the cell as a delimiter if you want. And the last argument, if not found, that's built-in error checking. So if the function doesn't find what it's looking for, instead of throwing a generic pound NA error, you could have it return a custom message like data not found. So this is the text before function. There's also the text after function, and it has the same syntax. The function looks for text after the delimiter you specify rather than before. So the solution to this problem is we're going to nest one function inside the other but it could look a little complicated. So first I want to show you each function separately, then we will combine them. So I'm going to go here at the top into column B, and I'm going to use the text after function. So I'm going to say equals text, and I just have to type the first few words. There's a function, I hit the tab key, and it types out the rest of the function, and you could see the syntax is right there. So I'm going to say text after, there's that cell, comma, and what comes before it? Well, what comes before each of these number codes is the word code and a space. I don't want to just put in a space because it's right there's, there's spaces all over. So what I'm going to do is in quotes, I'm going to say code space and close the quotation mark. Now, don't forget that space after the word code. It's important. 
And whenever you put text in a formula, it has to go in quotation marks or Excel won't know what to do with it and it's going to throw an error. So that's really it. I close the other end of the parenthesis, hit enter, and there it is. It says, okay, there's 8485 ships in two days, right? So this is text after. So it finds that word code and the space and it just returns everything that's after it. And I'll just double click to autofill. And now we can see there for everyone is that product code, comma, and that shipping information. So that's great, but like Bon Jovi sings, we're halfway there, right? We need to get what is that comma and before. So let's go to column C. And in column C, I'm going to use the text before function. So I'm going to say equals, again, just type the first few letters, hit the tab key, it fills it in, and just like the other one, it shows the same syntax. So text before, I'm going to go to that same cell A5, comma, and you notice that this code comes after the fourth comma. So what I want to do is first I'm going to say, yes, I want a comma. So that's going to go in quotation marks. Now that comma is to separate the arguments, right? So don't get this comma inside the quotation marks confused with that comma outside the quotation mark. And I'm going to say four because this code here comes after the fourth comma, right? There's one, two, three, four. So if I don't insert that four in this function, if I don't insert that four for the fourth comma, the function is going to default to the first comma and it's just going to say Blue Mountain or Columbia and whatever. So close the parenthesis, hit enter, and I can stretch that out. Let's autofill it. And now we can see for all of these cells, it's the beginning of the cell up to that product code at the end. Okay, so column D is where we're going to put the actual solution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the text before function with only two arguments. And the first argument will be the text after that we just did. So I'm going to go and say equals text before. So nested in there, I'm going to put in text after. And then we're going to go to that cell A5. And kind of like before, the next argument is going to be code and a space. Close the, close the quotation marks and close that parenthesis. Okay, so this entire text after function, that is the first argument of the text before function. So now I put in a comma to get to the next argument and in quotes, I'm going to put a comma because that's what I'm looking for. And that's it. I can close the parenthesis. Now, you might be wondering, hey, a minute ago, we had to specify that it was the fourth comma. Why aren't we doing that now? Well, that's a good question. And the answer is that we want to use the first comma that comes after what the text after function finds. That is, we're using the comma that comes immediately after the product code. So by default, the function looks for the first one, and we don't have to specify one in the function. I'll prove that to you in a moment. But let's be sure this parenthesis that's opening is closing there at the end. This parenthesis that's opening is closing there at the end. Hit enter. There's the number. Let's go and autofill it. There we go. And now we have all those product codes. Now, just to show you what I was talking about, I'm going to go in there. If you just want to be sure to yourself, if you just want to uh, prove it to yourself, I think it's going to be easier to edit up here, is after that, if I put in comma one and say that, yeah, I'm looking for that first instance, there's no difference. And I can autofill down and it's all the same. And you notice these all have that one and that's the default. So I really didn't have to do that, but I just wanted you to understand that it's really is the first one that we're looking for. Now, of course, you see, these are all formulas. And to use them, you might find it easier if this is actual text and not formulas. So if you want, just click the first one, control shift, down arrow. If you're on the Mac, command shift, down arrow, copy to the clipboard like you normally would. And on the home tab, the ribbon bar, 
hit the down arrow for paste, and you see we have this paste values section. Click that first one, just hit the escape key to clear out the clipboard, and now when you look up here, these are all actual numbers instead of formulas, if that's something you want to do. Microsoft introduced the text before and text after functions in Excel 365 a couple of years ago. So if your software is up to date, you have them available. Before we had these functions, doing what we just did would require a much more complicated and messy formula. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.